Mira here with the very talented musician Sean Hayes. How are you doing, Sean? Very good. How are you? Pretty good. <laughs> um, so I find it very hard to classify your music into one genre because you have a very unique sound and style. So how would you categorize it? Mm, that can be tricky. Um, I always just default on folk music because I think of folk music as um, intimate music that can kind of be done in small places or, or anywhere, you know, a person with just a guitar and a voice and a song. So it can be dressed up in a lot of different flavors, but at the end of the day it's really simple, intimate music. So I kind of think of it as folk music because of that. Folk music sometimes also means so many other things though, so it really is hard to classify things. So in a lot of your songs you use some cool instruments like the banjo, which you don't hear a lot in music nowadays. Mm -hmm. So how did you choose that instrument in particular? How did I choose the banjo? Um, the banjo... I, I grew up in North Carolina. I was born in New York. Actually, but I didn't even, I, I guess I heard the banjo maybe when I went to college. There was a guy down the hall from me who was playing banjo. When I first heard it, I was like, hmm. But then I, I became to like it a lot. But I, I also am really attracted to old time music more than, let's say, bluegrass music where you hear the banjo a lot. And some people would, would think of those as the exact same thing. But actually, old time music has this more frailing, trancey, uh, African really sounding style versus the bluegrass, which is very formal and so I've just really been attracted to that sound before and and uh, and uh, and also I've just met some really great banjo players. I think that might be the the thing that's more it's I, more how I decide what's going to be on my record is the people that I know rather than the actual instrument. I think it's more like oh look at this great guy I met who really can play this thing well and let's play music together. And that's how I ended up with the accordion on a lot on my last record as well, because right before I was recording, I met a wonderful accordion player named Rob Wright, who I think we might be hearing in the background there. <laughs> that's cool. Um, so you said you grew up in North Carolina, and then you moved to San Francisco a while ago, right? Yeah, 15, 16 years ago, 1992 to three, somewhere in there. So you've lived in two completely different places. How has location affected your music? I think uh, environment is a huge thing about music and the soil and the, the area that it's coming from. Um, when I first moved to San Francisco years ago, I didn't think it was that big a culture shock, but I think I was going to fool myself, actually. Um, I think that, that where, where you live and the, the feeling that the culture around you has towards music and why they're playing music is, is, is huge. And the South, I think, has a really sincere kind of feeling towards music. It's not quite as fashionable or as industry-oriented. It's just very much like this is music and you just play it and we get together and do it and then moving out here is much more I found people to be a little bit more eye on eye on the industry or eye on something about the fashion of it which is an interesting part as well so you've you've put up five albums so far I think so yeah and your your latest one is flowering spade mm -hmm. which is your first um, album that you recorded in a studio mm -hmm. so how is that different recording a studio rather or compared to more informal settings um, it's more expensive and so <laughs> the time the time aspect is different you really are uh, but you're always concerned about time because it's always going to cost you something and um, every time I've recorded it's it's just been well there was like a living room but I just hired somebody we all went in the living room and took over someone's house who was out of town and we just recorded and that was great and it, it lends a certain vibe and, and then I, the next record was the Big Black Hole and I did it in Etienne de Rocher's garage in Berkeley which was really wonderful great great experience and it was, it was exactly where I needed to be and then this time I had an opportunity to go in a place called Hyde Street which is a great studio and work with a really professional engineer and um, um, it, just, it just focuses it differently and uh, you have more control there's an interesting vibe thing that can be lost sometimes, though, because of the time restraints and the, mm -hmm. the, the, the like the clock. So. So I was gonna ask, which do you prefer better? Oh, you know, I don't. I don't think it's just a, it's an experience to experience type thing. I mean, I think ultimately I would love to get a group of people and go hide out in the mountains or hide out somewhere in a house and and really have time to live together and work on the music. Um, that would probably be the most preferable experience. <laughs> So how has your music progressed or changed over time? Um, it's interesting. Um, I don't know if it's progressed at all. <laughs> I, I write very, very from you know this this experience inside me and around me, and I write very simply, chord-wise, and I always have. Um, 
I, I kind of write in rants and trances rather than songs, I, and that's probably one of the reasons it's hard to classify it style-wise, because I don't really think of style very much. I just start playing a few chords and whatever emotion's going through me. I'd say I'd like to move away from that some, too, and maybe have tried. Um, so maybe the clothing and the sonic areas have changed, but I don't know if my actual songwriting has changed that much over the years. Okay. I'm getting older. <laughs> my experiences have changed, but I don't know how much my songwriting has. Okay. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Oh, yeah. Sorry. And all you guys remember to pick up Sean Hayes' newest album, Flowering Spade. It's awesome. Thanks. I'm here for Counting You. Sit with me a while, all that I have is time Drink with me a while, sip with me a while, all that I have is time We could find ourselves a bottle and wander the streets like roads And smile and wave at all those passing by off to make their home Talk with me a while, all that I have is time. Come with me a while, just be a while, all that I have is time. We could find a willow tree and climb a branch of sir. Sing to all those down below, warbling like to cuckoo. Crazy cucumbers all oh, la 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 Just be a while, all I have is time.